All right, it is a problem we've been hearing about for more than a year now. The semiconductor chip shortage. It's been wreaking havoc on companies known for producing everything from phones and computers to cars. With no end inside, the shortage is now expected to cost the global automotive industry $210 billion. Closer to home, some plants in Michigan, Ontario, and Illinois still sit idle because of the problem, slashing company revenues at the big three. The parts shortage also expected to keep auto prices sky high, possibly as far into the future as 2023. So what can be done to solve the problem and how long could this issue persist? 7 Action News reporter Darren Cunningham takes an in-depth look for us tonight. I spoke with a range of thought leaders, including auto industry experts on the chip shortage. Here behind me, for example, you've got hundreds of Ford pickups essentially complete just waiting for a chip. And so the individuals I spoke with say there are short term and long term solutions to this problem. We are heavily impacted. If an OEM goes down in which we supply parts, then we go down too. So it's caused a tremendous amount of volatility for our business. Mobex Global, a parts supplier for the big three, does not handle the coveted semiconductor chips. But CEO Joe Perkins says the ripple effect of the chip shortage has caused a 30 percent drop in production volume. Add to that volatility and inefficiencies. Obviously, the answer has to be more capacity in the industry with respect to chip production, inclusive of onshoring that. Making chips in the U.S., a potential long-term solution that Congresswoman Debbie Dingell introduced funding legislation for this summer. You think there needs to be more of a sense of urgency? Definitively, the there fund. needs to be more of a sense of urgency. I have said this to the president. I have said it to White House staff. I have said it to the leaders uh, in my party. Fred Upton and I have sent a letter this week. Dingle calling this a bipartisan issue. In the short term, she says the U.S. has to depend on countries like Taiwan to get their citizens vaccinated so they can continue production. The Biden administration, specifically the Secretary of Commerce, held a roundtable on the shortage last week. But that's not enough. Congress needs to act. The White House is trying to figure out where the chips are and where the chips are needed and whether anybody is hoarding chips that should be freed up for other people. U of M business professor Eric Gordon says finding and redistributing the chips are a short term solution. Long term, I think we're going to see car manufacturers designing their own specialized chips and either manufacturing them themselves or arranging to have them manufactured. As long as demand continues at the pace that it has, uh, this will continue to be an issue. Dan Hirsch, managing director of consulting firm Alex Partners, says the problem may persist until the second quarter of 2022 and another six to 12 months to finish installing chips. In the meantime, better planning, better visibility, better transparency will help. But the fact is, it's going to take some time to for for the demand uh, to meet supply. I reached out to the big three. None of them wanted to go on camera. However, GM did say, quote, very fluid situation, but we continue to manage it to the best of our ability and continue to focus on keeping production going of our highest demand products like our full size pickups and SUVs in Detroit. Darren Cunningham, seven. Action News. All right. Thank you so much, Darren. Now for more on the widespread impact of the chip shortage and why it will take so long to get back on track, head to WXYZ.com.